So it occurred to me recently that next gen hardware might be expensive. And if I wanna have any hopes of building a new system, which I fully plan on doing, then I need to raise some funds. So I have a pile of unknown condition computer parts here that I acquired from one of my buddies uh, locally in town here who runs a scrap electronics recycling facility. And so let's power this stuff up, see what we can get to work, see what doesn't work. I know some of the pins are bent on these motherboards, see if we can get them fixed, get them posted or built into systems because uh, I need some Raptor-like money or Zen 4. Probably 40 series GPUs probably 7,000 series AMD GPUs. Welcome back to Ultra Precision Technologies and let's just dive right into these parts over here. Let's see what we got. So first up, we have an Asus Prime Z270 P board. This board came with a stock Intel cooler stuck on the front of it. And the cooler itself looks like it's in good condition. There's no broken mounting pins or anything like that. Giving a quick look over the entirety of the board, I don't see any liquid damage or any broken or missing components. However, the socket in this board has definitely seen better days. Next up, this was kind of an odd find. This is a MSI Z590A Pro, which will take 11th gen or 10th gen CPUs or both potentially. I'll look it up, but uh, I should have something laying around here we can test it with. Just going over the physical condition of the board, uh, the heat sinks are a bit scuffed up and stuff, as to be expected. I was looking at pictures of this board online. There's supposed to be at least a heat sink cover for the top one. Maybe all three of these M.2 slots, they're missing. Again, not a big deal. A lot of M.2s will come with heat sinks nowadays anyway. This one did have the socket cover installed on it. So let's have a look at that. There's maybe one pin that's slightly out of place. Next up, I found an inbox Prime Z390A. How these things end up in a scrap recycler, I'm not too sure. Likely it doesn't work, but I guess we'll have to see. This board still has the plastic wrap on it. Board looks like it's in great shape, almost like it was in a box the whole time. So I don't see any physical damage to this board. Let's take a look at the socket. And for this one, the socket looks pretty good. I'm just gonna confirm that these pins are okay under magnifying glass before I shove a CPU in it. If this board does end up working, it could be a great replacement for my i5. If you remember from a couple videos ago, I had an Asus Z270 Strix board that ended up just dying on me for no reason. Next up, I have a, a Seagate Barracuda 500 gigabyte SSD. Um, just found that, see if that works or not. So I did end up getting four hard drives here as well. These are all two terabyte drives. Like used hard drives are sketchy, right? Cause who knows what these have been through, how much they've been dropped or whatever else, but we'll spin them up. We'll see what they're like. I would not trust used hard drives for any sort of critical data storage, unless you have them in like in a crazy redundant setup where you can lose multiple disks and still be able to back up your data. I also found two DDR3 Sodium sticks. They both say Lenovo on them on the sticker. They're each four gig sticks a piece. They each say Samsung on the back, so they probably came out of the same system. Hopefully they work. I do have a couple small form factor PCs that don't have RAM right now, so it'd be neat if those ended up working. And last but not least, I found a Hyper 212 with most of the mounting hardware. So that was another cool little find. So I got my magnifying glass set up back here. I'll take you guys over there to check out what I see through it. And let's just look at all three of these motherboard pins real quick to get that out of the way. And then we can start testing equipment. Oh boy, I do not have enough hands for all this, but so here's my magnifying glass and it'll allow us to get a really good look at the pins here. This is kind of what I see. It doesn't show up perfectly on camera, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to use this magnifying glass to take a look at all these pins real quick. So I realize you guys can't see what I'm doing back here, but basically I'm just going to be looking through this magnifying glass with this light and just using a small wooden toothpick to just carefully manipulate the pins back into place. And in you know, maybe 20 minutes or so, this will be good to go and all the boards will be straightened around. So I can't actually see anything bent or wrong with the Z590A Pro board. So I'm just gonna set this aside for now and call that one good. I also don't really remember anything being wrong with the Z390 board. So I'm just gonna check it quick. There's definitely at least one bent pin on this board. Okay, well, that's as straight as that one gets. And last but not least.
Okay, 15 minutes later, this is what I got. Pretty good, interesting points of note. I do have a pin missing right here. It snapped off and I bent it back in the right way. And right over here, I have a pin. The pad is flipped up sideways. I don't know, we'll see. All right, got me a T, got me a CPU. Let's do it. Guess it would help if I put the CPU into the right board. And it goes. DR4 cooler. Power supply. Screen. Goddamn bull in a giant shot. Here goes nothing. Well, the board lit up. That's something. Where is the CMOS? Clear CMOS just because. Take the battery out. Clear CMOS just in case. Hmm. I don't know, we could look at the CPU one more time. I think this one's too far dead, boys. Holy moly, going cross-eyed from looking at this freaking thing. Okay, try one more time. Not optimistic, only because that socket was so damaged and there is that one pin missing. I'm going, uh, nah, I'm not that risky. I was gonna say I'm going no CPU cooler, but nah, I'll just, I'll set it on there. At least the fan will spin up if I know it turns on. Let's go. Hmm, it's looking like a no dice for this board calling it this board is dead well that's how it be sometimes all right well it's not my testing methodology that board is just dead so we'll move on to the next one all right next up we got the z390 prime this i thought would make a good pairing with my i5 that no longer has a home I really hope this works. All right, well, we got lights. This one has a built-in power switch. Well, it's uh, doing better than the first board we tested. It's just training the RAM right now, which is a good sign. It's got some onboard boot LEDs so I can see what it's doing. It's sitting on the memory right now. CPU memory, oh, booted. Hey, that's not so bad. All right, so we got one working board here. Of course, I guess I don't know if like all the PCI slots and everything work, but this is a functioning board right here. <laughs> Not bad. Okay, and for this Z590 board, I just looked up the compatibility list. It's good with 10th gen or 11th gen, which is good because I don't have any 11th gen CPUs, but I do have a 10th gen in this, <laughs> an i7-10700KF. So I'll just extract this. What a pain, I hope this board works. And we'll just slap it in here. And this needs a GPU because this is a KF SKU, so it's not gonna output any image. What did I find? An RX 580. And I'm just gonna use the box from our board here so that the GPU PCI slot can hang off the edge like that. Guess there's no LEDs or anything on this board. Uh, JFP1 right here. That is on, that's plugged in, that's plugged in, that's plugged in. And when I power it on, another board doesn't turn on, no power, no life. I just noticed this board doesn't have a CMOS battery in it. <laughs> oh my God, what a roller coaster. Okay, so probably, probably still doesn't work but I don't know if boards will boot without a CMOS battery. So I'm just gonna take a working CMOS battery, like out of this board, for instance, because we already saw this board boot today, or I'm not sure if I did that off camera or not, but I know this board works. And I'm just gonna plug this in to see if the fan spins. 
I have a funny feeling this board is uh, still dead. Yeah, because it looks like there's probably supposed to be some LEDs around the onboard audio and they're not lighting up either. This board is like dead as a doorknob. Oh, find you the flash BIOS, flashback BIOS thing lit up there. Maybe it has like a BIOS issue? All right, bit of a long shot here, but I've put the BIOS file on this USB. It says push the flashback button. LED should start blinking, which it is. And when it turns off, it's complete and it's off. Really? Was it that easy? That seemed awful short. All right, well, uh... All right, so no dice. Even with that CMOS battery installed, tried flashing the BIOS. I double checked the instruction manual. Funnily enough, there was no troubleshooting section at all in the MSI user manual, which I thought was a little weird. Tried clearing the CMOS, no dice. This board just does not boot for some reason. Okay, next up, some SODIM RAM. I grabbed a couple of these mini PCs a while ago. I think they were like really cheap. I didn't know that they weren't complete actually when I bought them. And yeah, they're missing RAM if I remember correctly. And they didn't come with chargers or uh, power bricks, but I have a power brick now for these and I potentially have RAM. They also look like they do not have SSDs in them. They'll give the pins a anti-static clean and slot them in. Crunchy. I guess I could have put both sticks in, but what does this thing have out for video? VGA and display port. I do have a VGA cable. What does that mean? Okay, so that little song and dance means that the memory is not detected. I think we're gonna leave this tray outside the case for now because I feel like we're gonna be going in and out of here a few times. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even put the memory in right. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, that's a that's a rip on my part. That's what you get for rushing. See, rushing never gets you anywhere. Try again. Put the memory seated in there properly this time. Oh, I should do preparation. Apparently, I guess whatever was on this SSD is in French, but I guess that means the SSD works. It has Windows installed on it. All right, let's reboot and let's put Windows on here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm getting sidetracked. The RAM works, I should move on, right? Just putting the other stick in, see if it boots with both sticks. Boot. I don't speak French. All right, it's in French, that's a problem for another day. What am I doing? This thing works. This works, RAM works. Little computer in French. Okay, and the last thing I have to test is these hard drives. No, I don't have an easy way of testing these. And to be honest, I think this video is dragged on long enough. So let's recap. I got a new home for my i5. So that's good. Be able to build a system with that and get it sold. Raise some next gen hardware money. That SODIM ended up working in that little Lenovo PC I had kicking around. So I'm going to be able to install Windows on that with an SSD and get that sold. Also some good next gen hardware money. I got these four hard drives here. And part of the reason why I didn't test these is because I have so many hard drives lying around. It's insane. I have this crazy idea where I want to like just put all my hard drives into a system and just see how much storage it is. So if that's something that you think would be kind of interesting, go ahead and subscribe and you'll get the notification when that video comes out. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to set these aside in the unknown pile. Of course, we got the Hyper 212. I did plug it in. I don't think I got a shot of it. The fan spins. What else is there to say? It it works. So I got a good cooler for a system I can build. And unfortunately, we did have the two dead boards. The one with the million bent pins and one pin ended up snapping off. That board is just dead, dunzo, never going to work again. It's in the go back to scrap electronics recycler pile and the MSI board. I noticed when I was dismantling the little test bench I had set up that actually the lower heat sink, the one that goes over some part of the chipset was actually hot. 
So I suspect that that board actually has like an internal fault or something. It might be worth just checking if it still has any warranty through MSI. Like it is a, a pretty recently new board. So I may do that. I think that about wraps up this video. I just have to start moving some of the stuff and I had a little pile of stuff. I wanted to check and see if it worked so I could either get it sold or get it sorted. Yeah, thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you found this somewhat interesting and I'll see you soon in the next one.